Welcome to the Cultivating Health Equity Stories podcast. In this captivating series, we delve into the heart of health equity, sharing stories that illuminate the path toward a fairer, more inclusive healthcare landscape. Our mission is to amplify voices, challenge norms, and inspire change. Here is your host, Dr. Troy Campbell, a research scientist on health equity issues. Today, we have a remarkable guest with us, Lisa McKenzie. Lisa wears many hats, and her passion lies in empowering women diagnosed with cancer. Lisa, it is good to have you on the Health Equity Stories podcast. Thanks for letting us into your busy schedule. How are you doing today? I am doing great, and I really appreciate you having me on for this very worthwhile subject matter. It is, and the work you do is worthwhile. You you are helping so many people, and we wanted to get you on on this show. Just、uh, for the audience, I'll say a few things about your background. Lisa McKenzie, founder and executive producer of Unite Empowering Events, is on a mission. To have women embrace life beyond cancer, her passion for empowering women drives her daily efforts. After overcoming her own dark period, Lisa shares powerful tools to help others overcome adversity and depression. Inspired by her personal relationship with God, Lisa creates empowering group experiences for cancer survivors. Partnering with hospitals and physicians, she focuses on emotional and mental healing, helping survivors discover inner strength. Unite has gifted hundreds of women with empowering experiences, fostering an active sisterhood. Lisa's achievements include being a finalist in the Big Idea and the Women in Business Challenge, winning the Innovate Her Challenge. And being featured in a national Capital One commercial, she's also 2021 Estella's Oncology C3 Prize finalist and a member of the Cancer Advocacy Group of Louisiana. Her, <laughs> her, her Delta Gamma sorority background informs the positive sisterhood and leadership aspects in Unite's curriculum. I welcome the cat to the to the podcast. <laughs> he actually is my executive assistant, so don't、okay. let him know who he's at. He's gonna <laughs> freak out. But no, he any any time I'm on the computer, he started walking on the keyboard. I, I don't know if you saw me trying to push him off, but he wanted to make sure that he he was part of this. So wonderful. It, 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 we couldn't have started the show better. Thank you <laughs> for showing up、uh, as the executive assistant for all the good program. <laughs> That, that that you have. So let let's dive into your、uh, inspiring journey and learn more、okay. about、uh, the impact、Great. of your work.、Great. So the the mantra for for this podcast is、uh, health equity isn't an abstract concept; it's a lived experience. So we'd love to hear about your personal experience and the inspiration behind Unite. Empowering events. So, what motivated you to create these programs and so forth? So, the question I get all the time is, "Did I have cancer? Have I ever been diagnosed with cancer?" And when I tell people no, I think they're really surprised that I would dedicate my life work to helping women and their families who are impacted by that.、Um, right. For me, the motivation started when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. I was in my young twenties, and I watched her lose her hair, and then she had one、mm. breast removed and kept just one breast. So, as a young woman, it really bothered me to watch her have those physical changes. But she had an amazing attitude, so I don't think I was really impacted by her experience so much. Just you know.、Um, Knowing that at that time, that now that I was at risk myself, and praise God, you know,、um, I get checked every year, and all everything comes out good. But the you know the statistics really do show, you know, that、um, many women will be diagnosed, and especially if you have a history. So I'm very proactive about my screenings. But years later, in 2000,、yeah. 
2012, I guess, um, two of my friends were both diagnosed with aggressive forms of breast cancer. And that was when it really hit hard because I hung out with them and they were just these vibrant, amazing women who all of a sudden, you know, first the story was the same. Oh my gosh, I, I found it something suspicious. They're going to do a biopsy. And then you just watch the fear set in. And then and then you're hoping that it comes out okay. And then they get the news that it's cancer. And then they have to enter this foreign world that one day they're just moving around like everybody else. And the next minute their entire life changes with that one sentence of you have cancer. And so I watched what they went through where they lost their hair and they started, um, you know, fearing, am I going to be around for my kids? And their energy changed, their, just their outlook changed. And um, I think many of us who are on the sidelines, so many of us watching a loved one mm -hmm. go through that, that our, mm -hmm. you know, our desire is to help. But a lot of times we don't know how. I mean, you say, I'll pray for you. I'm here for you. Let me know what you can, what I can do. But that all always feels a little empty because you don't, where does it go from there? So for me, I just yeah. set out to say, well, well, how can I use my background, which was special events and I have a sorority background. And I saw the power of bringing women together and how women can yeah. lift each other up. And I thought, what if I just create an experience for my friends that allows mm. them to take their mind off cancer and um, realize that you're still beautiful. You still are an amazing right. woman. Don't forget that because right. of cancer. And I didn't know when I had that idea, which was way back when a runway show for cancer survivors, that there was such a greater need beyond feeling good. It was, wow, the, there's, there's not a really big effort in the world of cancer to address emotional healing and support. I mean, I know people try in a variety of ways, but that was the feedback right. we got was it was so good for these women to get together in a safe environment and start sharing their stories and leaning on each other. And I realized right. at that time, my goodness, this, this needs to continue. So it was an accidental discovery of an organization right. based on seeing the outcome of, of a runway show that was started off as a fundraiser and now as a full on 501c3 public charity. That has been a, a, an interesting uh, journey. Again, you mentioned that your mom had cancer, you had close friends with cancer, and it impacted you, and you wanted to do something about it. Now, how about your life journey with regards to uh, support with regards to emotional challenges. Did you have any personal uh, challenge that kind of motivate you that you find perhaps uh, common to even to those with cancer? It's going to sound strange the way I put this, but um, the catalyst right. was that um, in college, I was the president of my sorority and um, one of our pledges got gang raped by a fraternity, several fraternity mm -hmm. uh, brothers. Mm -hmm. And as president, and you know, I was just a young collegian and going about my life. And then all of a sudden an event, an event occurred that was catastrophic and life changing for this gal, yeah. this young gal. Right. And I watched my sorority implode overnight, confusion, sadness, despair. And we had to learn as young women at that time, how to rally and how to like soul search, like what's important to us in life and, and how can we be there for each other? And uh, that was truly the catalyst of me learning the power of friends and uh, meaningful relationships and support, and support. And I watched, so we had some advisors who helped us through that. Um, and right. some of the things they taught us back in my sorority, I use in my programs today. They were helpful right. to me as a young woman. And uh, I've, I use those today with the ladies that I serve in the cancer organization. So really, you know, you know, yes, the world is cancer that I work in now, but it really could apply to anybody going through right. a life-changing traumatic experience. It's amazing how the, our early life experiences shape who we are today and informs and, and helps us to make substantial contribution to, to society and to those who are in need. And, and, and that's why I asked the question, and I'm happy that you, you see the, the, the connection there between your college experience with your friend and, 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 and what you do today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the different 
programs, then you offer different programs with your organization. So uh, let's talk about uh, the story crafting program, which sounds yes. intriguing. Yes. Can you share how participants discover triumph in their uh, cancer journey? You know, it, it was birthed out of the pandemic and, and I'll tell you how. Yeah. So um, I put together a magazine every year that features the stories of our ladies. There was no right. rules to how the story would be written. We would just say, hey, we're going to put your photo and your story in this magazine and hand it out to the guests at our event and feature it on social media. And without any rules, the stories were all the same, every single one. I'll never forget the day I was told I have cancer. And then they tell you about your cancer, the radiation, the surgeries, where they stand, and, and then it was and the end. And so, you know, after a while, when you're reading those stories, as much as they tug at your heart and you, you connect with the cancer story, um, mm -hmm. I started recognizing that we're not really getting to know these women. And, and so what happened during the pandemic is that, as I mentioned, we put on these beautiful runway shows. That is really mm -hmm. the final grand celebration of an entire nine months journey the ladies enter into our program. So that's the end celebration that they get to look forward to. But they start off with a series of exercises that help them inter like figure out from the inside out where they are in life, how, what they want to feel like, what, what they want, what they lost, what they want to gain. And so um, with the pandemic, we we're going to have this runway show that was it was a, going to be a live event and then the, the world was shut down and we wanted to continue working with our ladies. So all of a sudden it was this moment of like, aha, you know, we can act, do a three day internet event where we bring mm -hmm. these stories to life and we can showcase them because people were stuck at home. They were looking for things to watch. And we filmed the runway show at the venue with a very small audience, but then we got to interview the ladies. And it was at that time that we introduced this program called Story Crafting. And the idea behind the program was to just get the ladies, tell us about a tra traumatic life experience, but then let's go back in time and tell us about you. What formed you? What are your earlier days? Like, where did you grow up? Uh, who did you hang out with? Who were who affected you? Because we would get to hear the private stories of the ladies. They would say, "Yeah, I raise alpacas," or "I work. I'm in the army and I've jumped out of airplanes," or "I'm a grandmother of 32 grandchildren," or whatever mm -hmm. their stories were. They never told those stories when we just said, "Write your story." So this program yeah. forced them to to think about who they were prior to their diagnosis, what became of them at the diagnosis, and then what they learned because of it, because there's always something you can take away from every life experience. Right. And so then the stories came to life. You can walk away now from these stories and say, like, you really know them. It's sort of similar to when you are watching the Olympics and right before the race starts, the, the production team has a little vignette about this right. athlete. They take you to their hometown village and they say, this is where this person grew up and, and this right. is why they work so hard doing what they do to become this athlete. Well, it's the same with our ladies. We get, got to give everybody a glimpse and that story crafting program was born. And that's the year that Estella's Oncology award us an uh, international prize for that. It was just completely out of the blue, but beautiful. And we use that now and it's so effective and so therapeutic. No, it, it, is, it is beautiful because in life, we think uh, one exam failure defines us. We yes. think one uh, car accident defines us. We think a divorce might define who, who we are. And these are impactful, life-changing events. But I'm sensing that your program uh, gives clients the opportunity to realize that life what is not just an event, but we have a story. Yeah. And, and if, we, if we can look at the bigger picture of our story, then we can find motivation. We can find reason to, to carry on living, yeah. right? You know what we challenge the ladies to do? And um, I say ladies because for the most part, my program has been ladies, but we have yeah. had some men and it's beautiful. I love it when the men get involved. They tend not to be as willing to join groups like this, but uh, they should. They have a lot to say. And we will work um, on that. <laughs> yes, thank you. I would love to do that with you. But um, 
yeah. what the, the beauty of a program like this, and tell me if you can understand this, is that when you go through something that's challenging and hard, and then all of a sudden that becomes this noisy confusion in your brain, you wake up thinking about it, you go to sleep thinking about it, you're, it's like a, a constant confusion, noisy. And so the story crafting allows you to take it out of your brain put it on paper and right. almost look at like a, like a projector in a way. And, and by stepping mm. back at a distance and, and reviewing it differently, it calms down the chatter and then also, and then creates a path to a new way of thinking yeah. about it. Because without creating that yeah. path, it just remains this noisy, you know, confusion in your it head. So you have people to organize their life story. Yes. Think through where you're coming from. And, and how you can overcome what you're experiencing and where you're going. Absolutely. It's, it's beautiful. And I love that um, some of the participants are so scared to share their stories. They're afraid to be vulnerable. And then right. when they start realizing, oh, my goodness, I'm not alone. Like when you get in a group and everybody's just being raw and real, and then all of a sudden, you're just like, wow, this, we're just all so human and, you know, human experiences happen to all of us. And uh, then right. they realize that not only addressing their story can help them, but then they realize the power of their story can help others because their stories can inform and educate or just make yes. the rest of the world say, oh, my gosh, I relate with her and I, I don't have to be ashamed of what I'm going through. And, and this is what we're trying to do on this podcast, right? We believe that if we talk to individuals with these challenges, like different forms of, of cancer, and, and they share their story, then others will hear and, and learn. And, and, um, and from that, gather their strength and, and motivation to move forward. If Troy makes it through, I can make it through. If mm -hmm. Troy uh, did these things or doing these things, then perhaps I can try. And, and the purpose of the podcast is to help to bring these things up, and which is really what uh, you're doing, perhaps, on a, on a larger scale. And yeah. I admire um, your work, uh, Thank Lisa. You. Thank you. I would just yeah. want to mention one of the benefits of social media that I've witnessed is that it has allowed people to see a full circle, a full spectrum of people, places, experiences. Yeah. And now, like, I just remember 20 years ago, if I saw somebody with hot pink hair and tattoos, I might think, gosh, that person's scary. And now it's like, yeah. oh, that person's cool. It, just creates a more acceptance of, of so many differences in our world and our communities and um, allows people to share more openly. So, so the, the ladies get together and share sto stories with each other. How does that work? The way our program works is that we, um, we always start with a group of about 25 women who enter a journey. They sign up and they commit to six to nine months, depending on our program. Mm -hmm. And right. it, it has a series of activities, which includes story crafting, one of them. And right. so uh, as a group, they all meet 25 of them, and they all get to sort of get a baseline understanding at that point of what right. each That's person's each going through. But then mm -hmm. they break down into smaller groups of about six to seven ladies who are assigned a coach. And that coach works with them for seven weeks on Zoom. We all meet on Zoom. They go into these little mm -hmm. mini breakout rooms with their coach. And each week, for seven weeks, they have to answer and fill in a journal that helps them break down their story. And at the, at the end, we challenge them to put together about an 850 word story um, that we share, not only in social media, podcasts, but also um, in this magazine that we distributed our big celebration where their friends and family are there. So yeah, it, it's a very, it's, it's almost like seven weeks of Real therapy. I mean, we're, but a group right. therapy because they are being raw with each other. And this is where these really amazing lifelong friendships are formed. Really deep, mm. true. Because, you know, in life you get together like, how are you? What's going on? Oh, I'm good. And then yeah. you get the quick little, you know, uh, elevator st pitch story of how people are doing. But you really, really don't get to know people sometimes. And so this allows, we, we kind of force them turn off, you know, step away from your family, be on right. camera, and you are going to, for seven weeks, be with your group, your little tribe, and, and you're going to get to know each other and share and support each other and then end with a story. You know, peer relationship is, is so good. 
Yeah. Because here you are sharing an experience with somebody who can truly relate to your experience. Absolutely. And, you know, we try as often as possible to have in-person experiences because um, there's nothing better than a, a real genuine hug you know, when right. you're, when you're in a group right. like that, but it is the next best thing to being there. And, you know, we tell the lady show up in your pajamas. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we aren't going to share the information. Like some of the stuff they share is, does not get in print because we say, right. say what you need to say, but some, but you determine what you want to share to the world because there are some, besides the cancer, I mean, we hear some horrible things that they have been through because yeah. a lot of times it's cancer plus, you know, cancer, Plus, my husband left me or uh, I was, you know, my, my molested by my stepfather when I was younger or, you know, lost right. a child to, you know, to fentanyl overdose or whatever it happens to be. But the struggle they have in their brain is, is not always just the cancer. And so it helps to sort of, like you said, piece the experience of their life together and, and figure out where right. they got their, how they got their power. Because you always learn something out of everything you go through. Right. Well, we could spend the hour and talk about story crafting. Yeah. There are so many other parts to what you offer to to your clients, to uh, cancer patients and, and survivor. Let's talk about SCART. And it's okay. a, a, an acronym, right? Yes. C-A-R-T. This is a unique concept. So how did you come up with the idea of using art to empower participants to express uh, their surgery or emotional scars? Yeah. So SCAR stands for SCAR Art. And the story behind that was that we were doing our initial group meeting and we always ask the ladies, like, why did you sign up to be in our program? And one lady said that she has, she's 20 years cancer free. And um, she said, but I'm, I'm here because I need to find myself. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, uh, for 20 years, she has not looked in the mirror when she gets dressed. She doesn't mm -hmm. let her husband touch her. It has almost destroyed her marriage because of no physical intimacy because she was so, so ashamed. And so she went through our program and we did all the inner healing. And then through that, she met an incredible surgeon who took care of some reconstructive fixes that made her feel a little bit more confident. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. at a Christmas party, several months after we had worked with this group of ladies she walks in and she's just head held high looking amazing and um and i go oh my gosh you look amazing she goes do you want to see and i'm like sure so a bunch of us went into the kitchen it was a all women christmas party but she yeah. throws open her top yeah. and she go you know I'll, I'll give a shout out it was dr sullivan you know she she throws up her top and and everybody's admiring the amazing work that you know, the surgeon did. But the next thing you know, there's six other ladies all with their tops lifted up and they're all like looking mm. at the tattoos or the surgery or the port scars or whatever it was. I was watching them so freely because they had developed that trust and bond with each other through the program. And so then I'm watching this beautiful sisterhood, but I, I went home and I was really amazed and admiring what I saw, but uh, I saw this piece of art hanging in the hallway of my office and it was just a white piece of art that with this gold jagged line going through it and I said my goodness that sort of almost looks like a scar you know and and I said yeah. what if we created a program that allowed people to have that same freedom of sharing their scars without having to lift up their tops because not yeah. everybody's comfortable doing that you know it's much what? easier to show a painting to the general public than you know, to lift up your top. And we don't, we don't want people to have sure. to feel like they have to do that. Right. So uh, yeah. that, that was born that, I mean, it was that another cowabunga moment, similar to the story crafting where I was like, Oh my goodness, we could call it scar art. And I'm like, scar. Yeah. And, uh, and then from there the, we created uh, this beautiful homework curriculum where you have a conversation mm. with your scars you, you take a photo of your scar, you sketch it out, you, um, you choose colors uh, that remind you of the feelings associated with that scar. Like um, red might be anger to some people, red yeah. might be power to another, you know, there's colors, yeah. you know. And so there's a color theory uh, part of the homework and then everybody comes together and they sketch their scar on canvas and then they paint their scars and their story and it's a way to help us identify with what they've been through and a way for them right. to get up and articulate it in a very unique and beautiful way so no no art experience is required it's really just the 
the opportunity. I was going to say, <laughs> it's so free. I hesitate to ask. Right, I, I hesitate to ask details here because I'm I'm no artist, but I, I, can, I can imagine if you're trying to paint your life story or paint a, a part, of an, a, a unique uh, event, perhaps in your life, then you have to think. You have to take yourself through the experience, and then you try to put it together. Yeah. And that's truly therapeutic. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, we've done thousands of these paintings. Um, we work with hospitals and organizations across the country who bring us in to do this one-day event. And not one painting ever is the same. You think you've seen it all. And they're all so unique and different. And um, now the program has grown to include a variety of uh, abuses. Uh, we just introduced SCART for Grief groups, where yeah. the painting is mm. not so much about your surgical scars it's more about your uh, illustrating the feelings you have about losing a loved one to cancer um very mm -hmm. powerful and then we have one for older children slightly different than the adult version with some of the questions that we asked and then we have one for professional caregivers which is amazing like i've only done one mm -hmm. of those two of those excuse me two i would love to do more <laughs> because i find that caregivers people in the professional saying nurses, hospice workers, things yeah. like that, are, are tired and burn out. And um, we, we bring them together in sort of a professional development day, and they get to bond with one another. A lot of times they're sharing their feelings that they don't get to share in a work environment mm -hmm. and um, painting how they feel in the position of caring for those people who have cancer or those people they lose, the patients they lose or the patients they help. Their paintings yeah. are really, really great also. So that's another so, version. So I happen to have, know of a client of yours who yes. has healed quite well. She has healed quite well. And she has several paintings in her uh, living room. And she actually shared uh, paintings. And I noticed something that these paintings, most of them seem to be about nature. Oh, Have you thought of that? I mean, there is definitely a lot of nature that happens, and I'll share why in just a second. But um, right. there's also a lot that involve the heart as a symbol. Um, okay. But the nature, let me tell you why that happens. So let's just say that you have a scar around that goes across your abdomen, long, jagged abdomen scar. And then you have maybe, you know, reconstructive scars. And so those get traced, and we add a, a raised mud so those pop out in the picture that ends right. up being i guess you could say the star of the painting i mean it's really the, the what people want to look at but then we ask them to not necessarily come with a preconceived idea of what the final painting is going to be because when they put the when they sketch it and add that raised mud and step back right. and turn the canvas this way this way this way all of a sudden they're like oh my gosh you know what this looks like this looks like you know a seashore or this looks like um, you know, doves or angel wings or, wow, I never saw that my, I, you know, reconstruction surgery looks like, you know, smiling faces or whatever it is. And so sometimes the art starts informing them. And, but right. yeah, I would say nature does come out, but it's, it, we really tell people try not to come with a preconceived idea of a, of a final right. painting. Let, let your, let the process sort of unfold. Um, right. And it really you, you is interesting. Art. You said that art start to inform. Yes, that, we watch that, it every. That's, that's remarkable. Oh, it's, it's so it's so interesting when somebody says, "Oh my gosh, I I didn't realize that," but check it out. This looks like whatever, and then and then all of a sudden they start kind of building from that, and and they're yeah. So it's it's yeah. it's so beautiful. Yeah, my my I mentioned nature because I am a lover of nature. If yeah. I'm not feeling well, I go for a walk in, in the park. It makes a difference. If I go to one of the state parks with a lake and a sunset, a different sunset in the evening, it's it's, it's healing. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so art is powerful. Yeah. Art is uh, really therapeutic. Somebody sketches something that starts turning into something that looks like an ocean or waves. Um, a lot of times that yeah. might have like a very angry element to it, like a raging mm. dark sea that's tumultuous and um but then they might have like a stars shining in the sky saying you know they never lost hope you know and i mean it's really so 
it's really interesting how they will incorporate nature, not just the good calm side of it, but sometimes, right. you know, and, and we get a lot of trees, these rooted trees. They're like, I'm firmly planted and I am growing. Do they see the end in the art, the ending of their story? I mean, and, uh, I, the, the seashore mm. is where I endeavor to go, where I can relax. You know, it's a journey. Right. I'm pushing here. No, no. I, I think my favorite thing about the class is if somebody comes like even once a year, because uh, so, yes. the story is never ending, right? So like it's so interesting when it's somebody comes yeah. and paints one year and maybe I've had people fully just put black paint on the whole thing and run out of the room for a second. And we're like, okay, you got it wow. out of your system. Let's, wow. if you want to keep that one, fine. Or let's throw it in the trash. Let's bring it back. Let's put the can a blank canvas and let's have you like take a breath. I mean, that's rare when it's that extreme. But a year later, you see a completely d new colors, fresh light. You could you could just see their growth just from the how they express themselves in the painting. So I've had some people co come three or four times, and each time there's a different growth, you know, that layers upon it, um, and their story keeps changing and evolving mm. and getting stronger. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Just listening to it, it's therapeutic for me. <laughs> Thank right. you. And so we have the, the uh, you're also the founder of the We Lift You Up Fund. What led you to, to create this charity and, and how does it support women beyond uh, their cancer diagnosis? Yeah, We Lift You Up was founded in 2012 after, actually, let, let, wait, let me back up, 2018. We, like I said, didn't know we were a organization. <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing in the beginning. And, and then eventually yeah. we realized, because we were- we just wanted to do good. Well, yeah, we were <laughs> raising money for other uh, charities. Like we would use our program to raise money for the hospital. I, I love doing that. But what we, st what we started realizing was that there was a huge need for us to be able to offer the programs we do. And so we create our own right. foundation and charity so that we lift you up really is that, that idea of, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. And we watch that with these women. It's, I will give you an example of the, you know, when you have somebody in a room, all these strangers and one person breaks down crying and you watch them mm. all stand up and run over and hug and and i'm mm. as the leader completely stepping back watching them do the work like it's exactly the way life is intended i believe is we lift each other up and so it wasn't like our team was in there waving a magic wand saying this is how we're going to make you feel better we watch them bond together immediately because it's just human nature to, to love on and I mean hopefully right. support each other and so right. that's the best thing we could do is just bring people together and say let's all just support each other and and uh, I think right. from when you mentioned in my bio about God I've had I have had and it makes me upset to call talk about it many ladies not many I've had enough ladies pass away <laughs> in my program um and I don't, I don't say that to scare anybody because of the thousands I've helped. Thousands have been right. healed and go on with their lives, but some really right. struggle and don't make it. And so when that happens, it breaks down the sisterhood. People have a very hard time with that, especially if you're a cancer survivor or someone diagnosed because you, you, you get fearful. You're like, what if that's me next, you know? Um, but so for me as leading an organization like that, you know, when that happens, it's always the question of, okay, like God, why is there cancer? Why is, am I part of this? It's so sad sometimes. Right. And, um, right. I just feel like the, the answer that always comes back to me is that I believe this, I could be wrong, that God is using these women who help so many people because it's a subject matter that sometimes is taboo, what we're having them talk about. And I'm like, right. you know what? I tell them, I think you've been handpicked. This is providential for you to be in this program because there are 17 million survivors and you're 25 ladies in this huge world that are marching on together to use your story to help others. And I believe that this program is something that helps bring love and some sort of just peace and support in a very 
fallen world, you know, I, 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 it's the only conclusion I could come up with as to, yeah. you know, how, how God yeah. is using it. And I watch it, I witness it. So it must be true. Over and over. Over happens. and over. Just, just bring us together, provide a space, provide an environment where we can open up and share what's in our hearts. Yes. And we find commonalities and, and we find ways we can, we can heal, help each other. And that's what, uh, bring the healing yes right that's the healing process yep. and i want to mention on the we lift you up fund it is supported by the most amazing people on this planet we have physicians and hospitals and local businesses who have maybe had a loved one impact or they just see the work we're doing and um, they make a donation to our organization through sponsorship or grants um, we we sell tickets to our event that go to that um, it's just really neat to see the way the community rallies around this because they get to see and witness their loved one change. Like, it's not like, I hope it goes yeah. to someplace good. You know, I hope the money is right. being used for something good. They actually get to watch this, uh, their loved one um, and a community member regain their life. That's so wonderful. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, very you good. No, it's a good thing. Yeah. So, so your live events and, and, and retreats, what, what impact do these uh, gatherings have on par your participants? And that's what we've been talking about, right? But l tell us about the magic then that happens during your live events and, and retreats. How do, how do they foster connection and, and, and healing? Well, the retreats are a little different than the live events because the retreats are just for the women themselves. And, you know, we say, okay. you know, come in your pajamas. You know, a lot of times uh, women who are wearing wigs will just come, you know, shaven heads like they they are free to just be themselves. And we yeah. really try to um, like it's silly. It's just like some silly girl time. Yeah. I don't, you've probably never been in a girl sleepover with pajamas, but when I tell you, <laughs> no. it's just really just a chance to um, have some fun and have, and we do some serious, you know, things also, but just to come away refreshed and to maybe not feel like a cancer patient, you know, and not have all the responsibilities of the world for a couple of days, you know, children, husbands, work, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just a chance to get away. Um, so that's what the retreat is. But the live events, what I've witnessed, this is what I love about the live events, is that in that room, we bring together once a year, doctors, nurses, uh, business owners, friends, family member, children under one roof to celebrate these ladies. And I have seen, I've seen husbands coming up to me crying afterwards saying, thank you for giving me my wife back. Like she's acting different. You know, she, you, she wore leather pants. Like, I mean, I know I'm giving you examples. I've had little tiny itty bitty kids who follow their mom on the stage all the way down and all the way back and they go home and they get out their Barbies and they start making clothes and say, I want to create uh, outfits that make these Barbies look as good as the ladies looked on, on stage. I mean, this is a, this is a true examples. I've had yeah. uh, doctors come up and cry and say, this woman has never smiled. She has come in head down, depressed, and you have you're, she's literally standing four inches taller on, you know, and, um, and so it is really beautiful because I think that is, we don't know what to do a lot of times, but at that, that one night, we do know what to do. We are there yeah. as a community saying, we are cheering for you. We are here for you. You are going to make it. We're standing by you. And so it's like, we're creating we're creating the atmosphere for people to come together and lift each other up. And, it, and it's very, that's the Capital One commercial that you mentioned. Um, yes, I was, was going to ask about that. That yeah. was crazy. I was called by Capital One producer because I was Capital One cur uh, customer. And they said, we read about you and uh, our production team wants to come out and film you. And it just was right mm. before my big event. I'm like, well, would you like to come? And film our event and so <laughs> so they actually covered the event I mean. and uh it was so weird it's the first time i've ever been involved in a viral something because uh they posted it on their capital one page and on facebook and uh the, one of the gals who was featured one of our survivors we were writing each other like oh my goodness did you see it's at a hundred thousand views and then a little bit later yeah. oh my gosh did you see it's five hundred thousand oh my gosh it's 
1.7 million, <laughs> you know, it, it was very exciting, but um, they walked oh. away. The production team said, you know, we cover a lot of events and they said, we felt this love energy from the minute we parked in your parking lot. They said there was a, like this yeah. energy for throughout that room that was contagious. And that, that is, uh, that's what I think makes those live events so special. Beyond that, we get the ladies get to shine. You know, they, some of these are yeah. introverts who yeah. were like at the beginning, we're like, hey, by the way, at the end, we're going to ask you to walk in this kind of runway uh, experience. Um, and most of them are like, I want to do everything but that. You know, some that extroverts are like, yeah, and I'm going to, you know, and they're just like owning every moment. But there's enough of them that are like, that's the one thing that makes them really nervous. Can I put you on the spot? Sure. You know, you've mentioned so many good things about the programs that you offer. Can you think of a patient that at the beginning was just in a bad state? And can you take us through, let us travel with you with this patient and, and how they recovered and came to a, a positive place in their mind I have their lives. hundreds of stories hundreds yeah. but like one that comes yes. to mind I'll I'll focus on my sweet friend right before the event she's very sick right before the event she was hospitalized and devastated mm. that she wasn't going to be able to do the, the event and her doctor said there's no way that you're um, going to be able to do this her sorority sister, I mean her, her sorority her Unite sisters, they, they kind of smuggled her out. I mean, they she got out of the hospital and she was in the show in a wheelchair. I mean, eventually the doctor wow. said, yeah, but we, you know, we, we need to be very careful. So uh, backstage, she was in a wheelchair and she'd be still looking out after her, but she, we ro rolled her on stage and then she stood up and she was like, she, we have a 90 foot long runway, you know, so she walks and she yeah. just got to the end and she put her hand up and, you know, thank God. And um, then walked back and then literally almost collapsed in the chair. Like she got this energy. Mm -hmm. And um, so that story uh, sticks, out. Um, sticks out. Yeah. I mean, there's so many. I am put on the spot a little bit because I'm trying to think of specific ones. Yeah, I know, I know. And in the show notes, I'm going to leave a link to your YouTube channel where uh, if the audience want to uh, to go back and look at some of those uh, stories, they can get caught up. And, I, I, and, and perhaps we'll have a few of them come on this show to talk about their experience. Yeah, and one, one other one that I am yeah. remembering too is we had two of the um, – two very involved ladies in our program got up to share what was going on in their lives. And, um, one is a mom of five children. And so next thing you know, running down the stage, we didn't ask them to get on stage. No. They, they ran onto the stage and they're there with their mom. I mean, there are just moments like that, that you don't plan. They're not scripted. Um, so yes, I, on my YouTube channel, there are very lots of different uh, inspirational videos there's entire shows if anybody ever wants to watch them but then all the story lots and lots of the stories featured and um you know it's it's you actually have a tv channel i notice where you can go back and watch an entire program right? yeah. there on the yeah we create that channel so that people could uh, go to a segment or watch continuously, you know, they, they didn't have to watch all 36 hours of <laughs> what we filmed. Right, it was right. quite an endeavor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how does one get involved as a patient? Is it that a doctor recommends or do you work with a specific institution like a hospital? Um, can you tell us about yeah, that? Yeah. So locally, which would mean the New Orleans, greater New Orleans area, um, we do have very right. good relationships with quite a few oncologists, doctors, hospitals. Mm. Um, they know us because we've been around for 12 years. So if they have a patient who is struggling, the the doctors or nurses will, d will definitely say, I think you should look into this program because it's free to the ladies. And uh, I think it helps those doctors do their job better. Um, some of those doctors who are our sponsors get to see their patient. They'll, they'll share their, the doctors will share the story that, hey, I can only do so much for my patient. I could do the surgeries, I could do the treatment, but I can't get inside. They don't have the time to be able to do that, to get inside their heart and their head. And uh, so for us to take it the next step, like we partner with them in the, in the recovery and the health of their patients where then it goes to the final celebration where the doctors can say, oh my God, like physically I helped that person get there. Emotionally, mentally, Unite helped them get there. And now 
look at the success right. story because that's all a doctor wants is a success story, right? Doctors and hospitals want right. that. So that is one of the ways is that the doctors refer us. Um, quite a few come from us from former participants who have a friend that gets diagnosed. And so they, they will refer um, outside of this area. We do offer the SCART program. Um, this, and then we also offer a full program, like we have a partner in Rhode Island, the Gloria Gemma Breast Cancer Resource Foundation. They've been working us, with us for three years. Right. They do the whole program, everything. Um, mm. And so mm. they have their own class of 2023, class of 2024. And so if anybody's mm. interested, I mean, I really would uh, suggest they reach out to us to see if they want just like a mini program or to do the full program. And the full program is great because you are really creating ambassadors for your brand. So, if you, so let's just say right. that you are, you know, at Methodist Hospital in Houston, as an example, just as an example. Um, if you have 25 patients singing the praises of your physicians, your nurses, their treatment, their health, their recovery, right. I mean, what better thing would right. a hospital want? And then those people go on to become almost like walking ambassadors, helping those who, you know, they say, oh, we wish we had a Unite sister in every waiting room, someone who's graduated from our program, who could sit there with someone who's family diagnosed and say, you're going to be okay. I was in your shoes. You're going to make it. Considering the whole person, you know, we work, you're working with the oncologist, you're working with the hospital, and they are doing their best to, to offer uh, the best treatment within um, their protocol, per, perhaps more pharmacological treatment but what you're offering here is emotional and mental treatments yeah these are alternative treatments that help us to go through our life struggles and to heal lisa it's admirable it's commendable the work that you're doing and i, I am thankful that you were able to make it here on our podcast and to share information on the the different programs that you're doing we we hope to get uh, involved at, at different uh, time and different levels. Hopefully, we can bring uh, other partners and uh, perhaps clients to tell their stories because storytelling is, is so powerful. It's, it advocates and it heals. Yeah. Thank you for, for being here with us this evening. There is a path forward after a cancer diagnosis. Nobody should go through cancer there alone. Um, you know, get involved. Find your support. Find your tribe and people who will lift you up. And, uh, and you can make it through this. There is a path forward after your cancer yes. diagnosis. Absolutely. So that's our takeaway from, from this yes. episode. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for your time and for coming on again. Uh, we'll say to the audience that all of Lisa's uh, contact information and, and website and uh, YouTube channel will be noted in, in the show notes for this episode. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, for Campbell. Being with us. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Cultivating Health Equity Stories. Remember, our mission is to amplify voices, challenge norms, and inspire change. Go to CultivateHealthEquity.com, sign up on our email list, subscribe for future episodes, and find the resources mentioned in the show notes. Until next time.